everyone, it's Chrissy here for part two of our single sailor brief in the return and reunion curriculum. So the next part that we talk about in this brief is kind of just talking about understanding change and learning how to roll with the punches. Um, I like that sometimes in my classes, uh, people will say something like, oh, can you take the stress out of the Navy? The Navy is so stressful. And I completely agree with you that the Navy is a uniquely risk a stressful job and it's a uniquely stressful environment. I don't actually know how you can take stress out of the Navy. I think that that's just the way that it is. That's like how the pudding's made. Um, I used to teach in public schools, so there was a certain amount of stress that I always dealt with as well that was just a part of the lifestyle. There were also a lot of really nice benefits. I, I had a lot of personal satisfaction working in public schools. I got um, six weeks of vacation, kind of. I mean, the good teachers will, will do a lot of professional development during that time. Um, so those are some of the ways that we can kind of balance some of the, th the ways that we feel, um, because coming home will, will well up a lot of those emotions and make you very reflective. In this particular situation, though, coming home will be different than normal. And what I kind of wanted to do today was, and this is one of the things that I have been doing lately um, to just work through feelings that I have of general uncomfortableness and uncertainty. Um, practicing gratitude daily is one of the ways that we can help with symptoms or feelings of depression and symptoms or feelings of anxiety. And it really has its root in mindfulness. Mindfulness is bringing your attention to the present moment and then recognizing how you feel both internally and what you're experiencing externally. So I filled out this chart just on based on COVID-19 and the coronavirus, but I put things on here like things I miss, okay? And this is me at home, uh, working from home, not able to go out for many things. So I miss, <clears throat> I miss the sensation of being out all day, like leaving the house early in the morning, going to work or going to do something fun, being out for lunch, staying out until dinner, or staying out past then and coming back dog tired. I miss that feeling. That's a, some, that, to me, that's a good day. I mean, I miss going out to bars <clears throat> and hanging out with my friends, excuse me. I miss the feeling of feeling a sense of camaraderie with people and, and talking to people and opening up and just being in the moment with people. Um, I do miss my friends and my family. Um, my family, as a spouse, my family is somewhere else. Um, it's not okay right now for me to go and visit them, and it's not okay for them to come visit me. So that is something that we've had to miss out on, and we've had to cancel trips, and we've had to cancel visits, and we've had to miss out on birthdays and holidays and celebrations. So I do miss that. And I just miss the general sense of planning trips and planning ahead. Uh, so I say there's three keys to happiness. Um, you have to have something to do. You have to have someone you love, and you have to have something to look forward to. And so this one is taken away for everyone right now because we don't necessarily know when things will be back to normal. We don't know at what point we can plan ahead. Um, so like our family had to cancel. <clears throat> we were planning on go to go on a cruise in March. I know I have really bad luck, okay? Really bad luck. Um, we had to cancel that. That was really disappointing for my children. So roll with the punches, right? But here's some things about being at home that I don't miss. I don't miss the fear of missing out. I don't, I, everyone's in the same boat as me, so there's no party that I'm missing out on. Uh, if I scroll through social media, most people are doing similar things that I'm doing, reading, hanging out. Some people are gaining their, they call it the uh, COVID-15, like the COVID-15 pounds, like the freshman 15. Uh, so some people are working on that and they have no shame. Uh, some people are developing new skills, but in general, I'm not missing out on anything out in the world. Um, I don't miss traffic. There's no traffic right now. If you go somewhere, you're not going to be sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Um, I don't miss the sense of feeling like I have competition with other people. And then uh, the other side here is the Sunday rush, or like sometimes the Sunday spiral. You know, when you get to the end of the weekend and you just want to kind of enjoy the, your last few days of the weekend, but um, you feel like there's all these things you have to do to get ready for the next week meal prep, take kids, get kids ready for school, uh, finish up a house project. Um, so I don't miss that. And then the last things I kind of remind myself the things I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that my family is in good health. Um, I'm grateful that I'm learning new tasks and that maybe uh, I'll be 
able to transition easier during another time of uncertainty. Because as a spouse, um, we move frequently. Um, we lose our support structure. Uh, the difference between spouses and single sailors is spouses will lose all of their support structure every time they move. Usually service members move and they'll recognize someone from a previous job or A school or um, some TDY where they met someone. So uh, spouses lose their uh, their social structure, just so, just so you know. Um, I miss learning and I, I miss uh, having a sense of family. I, I am learning new things, sorry. And my family is getting more time to spend together. So for example, I have maybe my dog back here. This is his picture up here. Um, I'm spending more time with him and I can tell that he's enjoying having some more interaction than he's used to during the week. So remind yourself when you feel like there's a lot of things out of your control, express some gratitude for the things that you do have. Um, I cannot tell you how many people are have lost jobs during this and I've lost my job in previous years and I haven't this year. And that is, um, <clears throat> I'm really grateful for that. So be lucky that you, like grateful that you um, have a job, that you have steady income. Um, be grateful that you're healthy if you are. Um, be grateful that that you have continued work and important work and work that is supporting all of us as Americans. So those are some things that I would just um, encourage you to express gratitude when you feel really out of control. So this part, when we talk about change with regards to single sailor, we're kind of talking about change being constant in that when you leave and you come back, things will be different. But obviously, like everyone who steps off the ship will notice that things are different. Um, but remember too that your friends might have grown. You might have um, connected with someone before you left and then later when you come back, um, they're, not, they're not the same, they've changed. Um, it would be nice if every time we left, uh, things remained frozen and just the way they are. Uh, but I can say I haven't, I grew up in Texas, uh, the great state of Texas. Every time I go home, something is, has changed and uh, people have changed through that as well. And so we kind of just need to roll with it, understand that just because something is the way it is now doesn't mean it will be that way always. Or sometimes, you know, doors are closed because new windows are open somewhere else. So consider that the change, even though <clears throat> it may be uncomfortable, that the, there might actually be a reason for that, okay? Um, consider if this is a positive change or a negative change, and if it's a negative change, what are some positive aspects about a negative change? Just like we were talking about with staying at home. Uh, so yes, I'm missing out on a lot of things, but there are some other things I've gained. I'm spending more time with my children than I normally do, and that's a positive in general. I mean, I never thought I'd be spending this much time with them, <laughs> but I think that uh, we're, we're bonding and um, we're learning some new skills all together and, and getting to have some positive family time. Um, and consider what support is available to you if you have trouble accepting change. Um, I like to just suggest meditation and mindfulness and I'll bring that into the end of another brief here. Um, but meditation and mindfulness can help you deal with uncomfortable feelings and ac accept uh, the feelings that you have because feelings, um, all emotions serve a purpose. Um, emotions are meant to be as signals to you for something. So sometimes being uncomfortable is a catalyst for growth. So if you think about too, there's this story we talk about in Effective Parenting um, about a boy who saw a butterfly emerging from its cocoon, okay? And this is, a, this is an anecdote. I don't know if it actually happened, but it might have. Um, but the butterfly is struggling to emerge from its cocoon. And the boy, thinking he's helping, just comes over and rips open the cocoon and lets the butterfly come out. Well, when the butterfly comes out, its body is really swollen, its wings are shriveled, and it tries to flap its wings, but it doesn't have the strength to, and its body's too heavy, and it just collapses. And the story is that the butterfly actually needs to struggle to get out of the cocoon in order for it to gain the muscles it needs and get the wings out. So anyone who's worked with animals knows kind of what we're talking about here. You have to allow for some un uncomfortable emotions and sensations in order to grow. So the catalyst for growth is that I become uncomfortable. So remind yourself of that when you start to have those general feelings. All right, I'll see you for part three.